what is up developers it is fortune dev back at it again this is going to be the part two for the daraja tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be able to pass the json response and be able to store it in our database so without further ado let's get straight to it and get a demo of what we're going to be looking at today so let me hit the donate button and get that sdk push enter that and pass a pin and if i am to check right here okay that's the confirmation if i'm to check in the mpesa confirmation response i should have right here this json file so this json basically contains all the information regarding the transaction so as you can see this was successful we have all the details and we have also ha saved this into our database so if i head back and check on the records i should have a new record for one kenya shilling so as you can see the transaction number 24 is right here and here is the transaction id the phone number as well as the amount so that is going to be what we will be building out in this tutorial so be sure to hit that subscribe button and give me a like for the youtube algorithm it really helps the channel out so before we continue if you want to go one step further and help me as i make more of this awesome content then be sure to visit the link down in this description and you can enter your mpesa number and whatever amount and simply donate to help the channel grow okay so let's get straight to it so in our previous tutorial we were able to get back this data to this particular file so we have this mpesa confirmation response.json so first of all how this is actually live right now it's not hosted on any platform but it's actually i'm being i'm channeling my local host through ngrock okay so basically i have my zamp and i have my local server running but i have to, I have now tunneled this using this tool called ngrock which you can download right here I'll, leave, I'll also leave a link for this down in the description so as you can see from my terminal right here i have this running so what you usually type in is ngrock http 80 to start tunneling your local host on port 80 and from that you'll be able to get a live link from which you can receive requests and such so let's get straight to what actually happens under the hood so if i come to my callback url dot php i'm going to explain everything in detail on how this happens so i'm going to start at this point so the data you actually get from mpesa i have stored this in a variable called mpesa response from which i'm getting all the contents that are being sent to this particular url from safaricom from which we specified right here in the sdk initiate.php you can clearly see in the callback url we have set this to be the particular callback so all the data is sent exactly to this url so once we have that data we have to do a little more for us to actually work with this so first you have to specify the log file which i have named it mpesa confirmation response.json which is exactly this file okay so this is the file where the data is written into as well as uh, you know the, all the transaction details so for us to do this you have to actually open this file and start writing some content onto it and that's it so you will have all the data in the json file but we already had this from the first tutorial so let's go a step further so now we have to process this json so first to be able to store this in a database so first you use this json decode which is built in into php and it will be able to decode the json data and from this you can be able to now access uh, some of this directly so as you can see you pass in the callback content variable which you created which is the past uh you know json data which is it's decoded the decoded version of this data then everything else you see here is a direct derivative of this data because as you can see this json if you study the structure you have the body 
you have the STK callback and then you have the STK callback callback metadata which is the amount the receipt number the balance and what's not so from this structure you can be able to see how exactly you access this one by one so I created a variable for the result code from which you just head to the callback content and within the body you will be able to find the result code but as for something like the amount you'll have to access the met the callback metadata then this item is actually in the zero index of actually the you know the array because as an, as an array there are also indexes for every value so as you can see you actually specify this for the phone number and the MPSA receipt number as well and at this point once you have the formatted content and you already have access to each and every object uh, you can also go a step further with this this line of code which is creating a formatted phone number in which will replace the 254 with uh, just the digit zero if you want you know if you want your phone number to be in 07 format then i guess the last step here is i only want to store data that from a transaction that was actually successful but you can always remove this particular if statement if that is what you want so the next step would be to connect to the database of which i just used a standard mysqli connect i specified the local host the user uh, no password and the database the raja of which i will share an sql so that you'll be able to import this entire database so the next step was to check for the connection and if the connection was successful insert into the database so this is a, a pretty standard sql query to insert into the the table data the request id result code amounts and etc and basically that is how you pass data so the technical part is just simply uh, where you process the MPSI JSON into you know an object and that's it as for the records page you can really simply achieve this by just creating a user interface and then you just open up some PHP tags and fetch this data from the database so just connect connect to whichever local uh, whichever database you'll be using whether local or hosted then you have to create an SQL query and uh, you know reference the connection and create an SQL query to select all the data from that database then from that you can fetch this data and echo it out dynamically using PHP and with all that said you will have something of this particular nature so you'll be able to initialize transactions get an SDK push receive the response you know process that data and be able to store it into your database so that was it for this tutorial the, the code will be available down in the description so there'll be a github link to this particular um, repository but if you have any questions be sure to get in contact with me down below i will also leave contact details so that you may reach out to me at any point okay so that's it for this tutorial in the next one we'll be doing a lot more uh, impl implementing more logic uh, redirecting to success and error pages and whatnot so that's it for this tutorial i'll see you guys in the next one